Hello students, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart and today we're going to do some examples for shear and bending moment diagrams. The example we're going to do today is example 7.2. It comes from Hibbler's Statics book. And in this problem, we have a, a very straight up uh, question asked to us. It asks us to determine the internal forces at point C. If we look closely at the beam that we're given here, we can see a few things. Uh, we can see that we have a distributed load that's applied to this beam. And it's applied in a triangular fashion, meaning it's linear. On one side, it's 1,200 newtons per meter. On the other end of the beam, it's zero. And it's linearly distributed. We also are given dimensional information about this beam, so how long it is. And if we look closely, we see that this beam is rigidly attached uh, to some wall, right? And we know that that type of support would typically generate a normal force, a shear force, and a bending moment uh, on the, on the, at, at that location, right? So that helps us to kind of know what some unknowns that we have for this problem are. So let's go ahead and take this information and list it out in our knowns and unknowns. We're at position zero, where W is a function of X, where the distributed load is a function of X, at X equal to zero, it's 1200 newtons per meters, and at X is equal to three, it's equal to zero, given the dimensions. And then because our external loading is only in the Y direction, we'll eliminate any AX term and our unknowns in this problem are simply going to be AY and MA. So now let's take this diagram we're given and replace it with a simple free body diagram. And in doing that, we're also going to replace this triangular distributed load with a single concentrated force. Now, what is that concept? Well, let's make a diagram for it. If we have a distributed load, that has a triangular shape, right? So it's a linear distributed load. We can replace that distributed load with a single concentrated force, so force R, which is equal to the area encompassed by that triangle. So one half of W, so the high number, times the length or the, the, the run of this triangle. So that's the total X, right? We also know that this force resultant would be located at one third of the distance from the high side and two thirds of the distance from the low side, right? Okay, so we can take this concept of a concentrated force and actually bring that into our free body diagram. In the free body diagram, we free the body from its constraints replacing that wall support or that, that rigid wall support with the reactions AY and MA, right? We also are going to replace that distributed load we have of 1,200 newtons per meter with the single concentrated force, right? That's great. We, we, and, and then from here, with this diagram, so we're, we're, we're replacing this with just a single concentrated force with this diagram, we can apply equations of equilibrium and we can solve for AY and MA. But in this problem, that is not what we're asked to find. We're asked to find the internal forces that are transmitted or that, that, are, that are, are transmitted through point C, right? Well, when we are going to find those source, uh, forces, we have to do a method of sections. And when we do the method of sections, we can choose either the right-hand side or the left-hand side. We have the choice. We can use either of those, and they will give us the right answer. Now, if I had to choose, and I looked at the left-hand side, and I looked at the right-hand side, I would want to go with the right-hand side. The right-hand side 
doesn't have any extra unknowns in it. It doesn't have an AY or an MA, right? So the only unknowns are going to be those um, internal forces and moments that develop, right? And we know there's only going to be three of those. So instead of taking the time to solve for AY and MA and then go and do the work we're supposed to do, let's instead jump directly, take the shortcut, and use the right-hand side. Do a section of that side and get right to our answer. So let's do that. If we section the right-hand side, well, we have to take that right-hand side as it is. So we're going to bring it down, and we're going to take it down, take, take that right-hand side as it is, which is still a distributed load. Now, we're cutting in the middle of this beam at an equal distance. So at that point, at that cut point, the distributed load is going to be 600 newtons per meter. Since we've cut the body, we've exposed internal forces and moments. Let's review those. We've exposed a normal force. We've exposed a shear force, and we've exposed a bending moment that are at that point C. Those are the things that we're asked to find. Those are the things that we're, we're supposed to get, right? Let's take this diagram and do the same approach where we replace the, tr the smaller triangle with, a, with a, uh, uh, a single concentrated force that represents the forces in the body. So let's do that, right? So we, we do that. And now we have this force resultant. And again, that force resultant is equal to the area inside of this smaller triangle. So that is one half of 600 newtons per meter times the total length of the triangle, which is 1.5 meters, right? Okay. And so that force resultant ends up being 400, 450 newtons, right? And its location is either at, is from, the, from C, it's 0.5 meters, and from B, it's 1 meter. So we have all the information we need for this diagram, and now we can go about creating equations of equilibrium. This is a 2D problem. 2D problems uh, have three equations. We have three unknowns. Hey, this is a problem we can solve. Let's build those equations of equilibrium. Let's start with the sum of the forces. So we're taking this diagram and creating equations of equilibrium. Start with the sum of the forces in the x direction. We'll find that the only force we have is that normal force C, so it ends up being equal to zero. Next, we'll solve for the sum of the forces in the y direction. Our unknown is the shear force VC. We solve for it, it's equal to 450 newtons. And finally, we wanna do the sum of the moments we can choose where we want to sum the moments about. We choose point C because that's the most things are going to cancel out at point C. We end up finding that the moment at point C is equal to negative 225 newtons times meters. All right. So we've solved this problem. We were asked at the beginning of this problem to find the internal forces at point C. We analyzed the diagram figured out our knowns and unknowns, and we identified that we needed to replace that distributed load with a concentrated force. In drawing our section line, we made a choice to choose the simpler side, the right-hand side, side that required less calculations to solve. We do the method of sections, and we have that triangle again. We replace it with a concentrated force and then we apply our equations of equilibrium. All right, so I think this was a good, a, a good example for us to look at. We still haven't gotten a shear, and a shear force or bending moment diagram. Look for that in our next video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll see you in the next video.